Okay, we're now recording. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that Hangouts is so limited in terms of the number of participants. Probably a good idea to update the, the calendar and light those people. Request password. Uh, for anyone who asks, it's in the invite that was sent. It's nine six three seven one one. Oh, okay. We'll, and we'll get our logistics streamlined. If it's helpful while we're waiting for people to come in, uh, one thing I'm happy to do is to just start a, a sheet where we can kind of have a basic onboarding and protocols thing so that people can, mm -hmm. what systems are we using, if there's software they need to have loaded on, what's that going to be, and, uh, and whatever best practices we come up with. Yeah, let's do that. I, I'm trying to keep up and update the, the main notebook to include most of these things, and that's where I feel most people will see it. So let's start the Google spreadsheet. That way we can formalize it and then transform into uh, more actionable tools. So we're up to nine folks now. So we're about where we were. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hey. What's up? How are you? Everything is fine now. Like, if we will, if we will have time to discuss, I'd like to discuss that our uh, quantitative research project is just kind of a project on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's <clears throat> probably less uh, organized. than the NLP project. Yeah, I agree. And mostly because we're, we're kind of, you know, still figuring out how to do things here. Um, if you feel you have a structure in mind, how to get more people into that channel and start discussing things, uh, share with us. I'm not sure I'm the best person to help with that particular piece. Okay. And, and again, I'm sorry if I'm over talking, but one thing I'll, I'll throw in there is that I'm happy to, if anybody wants to, to message me on the Slack, if you have specific logistical pieces, then I'm also happy to try to help you some of the cross pollination on that because I know um, that, uh, Arturo, you're, 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 you're maxed out in terms of the different pieces. You're, you're having a lot of balls you're having to juggle. So I figure we'll, we'll, we'll figure out how, how we can share some of this, that load between us all as well. Yep, that's the key. I really appreciate you uh, stepping in and doing things like that. Uh, document on external communications. Uh, basically, we have a document that Daniel formulated in terms of who we are as a group and what we want to achieve. 
uh, for us to have more efficient external communication with uh, other organizations uh, for potentially getting more data, getting um, you know more support infrastructure, or even when it comes to AWS uh, credits or Google Cloud credits, any way that uh, organizations can support us. And we're trying to work through that document, establish a destination, and basically a communication protocol for, for all of us. So basically, I should uh, uh, contact Daniel, uh, find out what should be the structure, and then submit the report accordingly, right? I think that's the best way to do it right now, unless you, you see a better way of doing it. Again, no, we'll, we'll see if it way. works. No, I think that's, that's good. Yeah, I will do that. And I think your things will evolve pretty quickly. So we'll, we'll just kind of, we'll keep it organic and then we'll, we'll develop structure that best suits how, how we're actually realistically operating. Okay, okay. Cool. so we have 15 people on the call here. Uh, since uh, some of, of, of uh, people on the call missed out my kind of summary, I'll try to uh, repeat that once again. Basically, as we are figuring out everything and how to collaborate, uh, there are two specific things that I wanted to accomplish on, on this call. And they are primarily discussing the current progress and just the, the technical progress and, and then understanding what to do next. So as a summary, we have that scoring sheet where we're trying to get 20 people to score uh, every single task from the Kaggle competition to understand what is feasible and makes the most sense for us to try and help. And then we're, we're going to take those uh, scoring sheets and use the uh, visualization of similarity between tasks and the papers to try and understand what subtasks from those tasks we can uh, try to formalize into uh, actual machine learning problems. And does everyone have access to the uh, that? Power BI uh, visualization between the papers and tasks. Okay. Oh, Mike, you're here. How are you? Yes, I am. Hi. Hi Perfect. Thank you so much for putting this uh, together. Okay. That was yeah, amazing. Apologies if I'm slow. No problem. That was actually amazing. Like the speed of collaboration and transforming from just a raw notebook and results to this visualization. It's the best thing that I've seen uh, when I woke up today. <laughs> After the brand document that Daniel put up. That was also amazing. But yeah, um, I actually had a couple of questions for you. Uh, I've noticed mm -hmm. that there are some um, things that are missing in terms of titles for documents. Uh, is that the, the problem of data set or? Uh, possibly, yeah, because it's relying on the, um, you know, the paper ID versus the uh, SHA column between metadata and the um, full text data. Okay. And that was um, a bit messy. I think in the first version of the data set, I think that cleaned it up a bit so that might be a factor. Okay, maybe it's worth, um, not sure who's the best person to help you kind of uh, figure out what's the, um, the cause for those missing uh, pieces. The other um, I might be able to help with that, if I could interject for just a second, sorry. Sure. Uh, uh, so one of the APIs for Semantic Scholar allows us to look up the, the title and the abstract for as long as we know the DOI or some other identifier for it. Um, so it, as long as I know the title or if it has the DOI or the PubMed ID or something, um, I can just run up this anything that's I haven't actually gone through the whole um, notebook line by line. Uh, I've just tried to jump to the end, grab the results and start visualizing them. So I probably need someone's help if they can um, work on my little script that um, spits out the results as a JSON file. I don't know if you guys have seen that piece of it, um, so that would need enhancing to add the similarity into the data results. I was going to ask how you were calculating similarity. So just some background, I, I do NLP and like document clustering and stuff like this is my 
area of work. So <laughs> um, I'd be happy to take a look at the code and uh, figure out if, if anything needs to change. Yep. So the idea was uh, to just create a basic. So yeah, the idea was to create just a basic foundation similarity, uh, nothing too complex. Uh, you can check out the, the actual notebook in Trello card for this specific task. Um, and if, if you join the, our Slack, you'll be able to, to see the Slack channel specifically for this task. Um, Platon was the person who created the, the original um, similarity metric based on the existing notebooks. I think there were like three that I've added to the checklist. But yeah, if you can jump in and have some uh, quick uh, feedback on that, that will also help. Cool. Uh, and that's on the, the Jira or, or is that again? On Trello. On Trello, gotcha, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just uh, listed out, figure out the missing title uh, data from uh, visualization, uh, add similarity metric results to the uh, current visualization. Um, I am also adding hit 20 people uh, mark on the scoring of the uh, tasks in the scoring sheet. And what else? Uh, just so people from the other group know, the other Slack group know, um, somebody is using Tika and some other tools to call all of the, um, whatever, 49,000 articles or something. Oh, I promise I'm not blending food. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll, supposedly we'll have all of that data and he's also extracting like the the named entities from uh, each one of the articles every protein that's mentioned every gene that's mentioned uh how many times it's mentioned and in what context so like uh the amount of metadata that we'll have by i i think he said monday is probably gonna increase a lot so um we should have a bit more or uh data to work with especially for like if we want to do clustering if we want to do um, uh, categorization or anything like that, we should be able to do it more easily by uh, starting Monday. Amazing. Um, is there something that, uh, you know, people in, in our Slack can help with uh, for that process? As far as I know, it's just on his server and it's running, so he, there, there's not much uh, manual um, input at the moment. Uh, okay. And I already have a script for extracting like the JSONs and putting it into a CSV. So uh, it's not like a work intensive thing. It's just that it takes a while computationally speaking. So. Okay. Does anyone else have um, ideas about the, the actual, uh, you know, Slack. We've got like the journal name as part of the metadata which tells them whether it's peer review, reviewed or not. Uh, but they're asking for things like the study design, level of evidence, uh, sample size. They haven't even started getting into that. Um, that came in about midnight my time. But uh, yeah, if, if maybe if we can start trying to pick those apart and understand them from a data science point of view. Is that data that we can derive from the existing data set or is it data that we can reach into something, some other data and, and combine together with our data set? Uh, we try and put the link in the chat if anyone's able to go and have a look. I'm an ML researcher. Um, at Scale AI, and we offered to do free data labeling for anyone who's working on this problem. Um, so it would be great if you guys can come up with a list uh, or a ranking of potential things that you guys want labeled, and we'll do our best to accommodate. Amazing. You guys rock. That's very timely. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so if you guys, um, uh, I started a thread in the Slack channel um, 
please, if you have any ideas, just add them there. And we're going to be talking about them internally. Um, and we'll probably start uh, trying to get going with some of those projects very soon. Figure out the list of data sets to manually enrich uh, with the help of scale AI. Exactly. And uh, just to note, um, the, the tasks um, that we're giving to our labelers uh, should be fairly understandable and not require um, any uh, research experience or expertise. Cool. Um, anyone else? So are the next steps to, you want to just score the tasks to see which ones were most related and then see what yeah, the are kind of go from there? Maybe it will be good for me to kind of explain a little bit about the, those uh, features that I've listed out. And uh, again, this is just my judgment and my subjective judgment about them, but I listed out impact, uh, data presence, similar solutions, specificity, and simplicity. By impact, I meant uh, just how timely is the task to the current situation. And even though it is timely to understand how geography affects virality, I think it's actually a little bit less important in terms of, you know, pretty much it's everywhere at this point. And we're, we're, we have to think about things like incubation, transmission, and how environment, environment affects those things versus just uh, how geography affects it. So that was my thinking about impact. Obviously different people will have different thoughts about it. And that's why we, we try to get 20 people to score it. And then the next one is data presence. And this is, um, my attempt to understand if we can um, not only rely on the current data set, but also think uh, deeper and understand what kind of additional uh, data we can get, scrape, uh, enrich manually, um, you know, use crowdsourcing, potentially involve the actual patients that are experiencing it and any other ways that uh, can help us uh, understand those tasks better. The next one, similar solutions. This one uh, was my attempt to understand if there were some similar um, you know, challenges or machine learning implementations that uh, were uh, applied to uh, similar problems. Like if there were different viruses or different uh, pandemic situations that were explored using uh, various machine learning methods and just if there are some papers uh, that we can explore for that. Specificity, uh, it mostly uh, goes towards how good the task is described. Uh, if it's very abstract or it's kind of obvious, uh, the one about how geography affects virality is very obvious, but the other ones um, you know, have plenty of questions that are very abstract and hard to, to formalize in, into real machine learning problems. And the last one is simplicity. And this is just based on, you know, uh, heuristics of thinking how complex is the task overall, how many different things, uh, things it, it, uh, it is combined from and how, how, how simply it is for us to try and solve it within our community. So that was my kind of thinking about the scoring. Let's try to hit 20 people. Uh, after you, you score them, uh, there is an average uh, metric on the right that combines all of these five features. And then there is uh, highlighting in green, which is basically just a visual indication of what you think is the, uh, the best problem to be working on right now. And I think once we hit 20 people, we can uh, aggregate the top three results from those 20 people and then jump into the Power BI visualization and see maybe there are some insights, maybe there are some things for us to immediately transform sub uh, 
subtasks from each of those into technical tasks or data enrichment tasks or data scraping tasks. Does that sound good? I think that sounds solid. To, to me, one thing we might want to do is we can also figure out for people if people have a specific interest or insight into one of the uh, uh, other tasks, figuring out whether we, as part of Corona Y, try to set up sub areas for them to work on, or whether we want to be trying to liaise with other groups and encourage them to form their own their own sets just so that we can can limit signals and noise. Um, I think either way can work, but uh, but we we can decide on which which way we want to approach that. Yeah, my assumption was that uh, there won't be that many, uh, you know, specific um, knowledge experts joining us, but that, that assumption was kind of wrong because we started getting people that have the bioinformatics, uh, computational biology expertise. And um, yeah, maybe it's, it's also worth uh, trying to nudge them to score these tasks and kind of give higher priority to their rankings because they actually understand what, what they're scoring and talking about. And yeah, if, if you, Daniel, can uh, start that uh, onboarding spreadsheet for us to better qualify uh, for that specific intent, that would help because the current participant uh, sheet that we're filling out with the about is very limited. Uh, oh, I see that you've added those additional columns, key skills, status, availability, team, sub team, location. So this is going to be great. I will probably email all the people mm -hmm. that already left their emails to fill those in. Um, yeah, that, that will be helpful for us to understand those specific domain expertise angles and how to uh, encourage collaboration there. Yeah, and we can, we, we can see, I'll just throw this in while, while there's a pause there. Um, my, my goal, and again, you can let me know whether you want me to channel these towards Corona Y or whether that's gonna be a distraction from what the core mandate here is. Um, but is to, in terms of trying to build momentum, you know, as we start to get results, um, be using those to try to promote what's going on with this group and to then use that to try to, you know, anytime if we're getting sponsorship, if we're getting other organizations involved, be able to use that to pick up momentum so we can get more subject matter experts and get the people who may be most salient to what, what the mission here is. is. And so to, to help keep me on task, you can just help me uh, know what, what the vision is for Corona Y and what the mandate is here so that we, so that we protect the group from having just a, a fire hose of irrelevancy, but so that we can bring in the group, the, the people who are actually gonna be a benefit. Yeah, very good question. I wish I had a very structured <laughs> answer for it. Uh, I think the brand document that you've created uh, is a very good start in terms of outlining that uh, you know, it's about multidisciplinary collaboration and global impact. And I think that's the, the core vision. We don't really care about, uh, you know, our organization as an organization. We care about the impact and we're, we're just, you know, out there figuring it out. So I do agree that the momentum and getting more uh, people involved is super important. Um, we kind of lack that type of talent in the, in the group right now because mostly, well, first of all, we're highly introverted and we're high, highly technical. So that, that is a disadvantage to that specific uh, thing. I am trying to create that LinkedIn article uh, using the, um, uh, basically there was a conversation on Slack about the public call for data. Uh, Mike, something i don't remember his name created the initial uh, structure for it and which is why it's important who should care how to do it i'm taking that and i'm wrapping it into a linkedin article uh to post and kind of promote across uh, my network newsletter linkedin and get more people that are not necessarily data scientists to to join the group and you know increase the momentum there 
And if we identify any specific areas that we're looking for, then I can try to focus my efforts there. So for, as examples, I've reached out to some of the, the, the coding schools, the digital marketing places and things like that, where they have students who have to be doing work anyways, to see if there's a few people who want to take on just some of those little, little tasks. But we can, we can focus on, you know, if there's specific medical expertise or other things like that that we're looking for, um, then, then I can... I, that okay, can... I, I'll add uh, one more thing to the list. Identify list of experts that would benefit the, um, the group and overall momentum. Okay. So the only thing that's coming to mind right now is the epidemiologists. Just try to track them down, but... Yeah, the very cool piece about the current visualization is the fact that we can actually see uh, the authors that have the most impact for a specific task. And maybe it's worth actually, you know, reaching out to these people and kind of incorporating them. I understand that they're probably super busy right now, but we kind of have to balance the, the vision of the fact that we can potentially help them uh, be more productive about their, you know, stuff that they're working on right now. We sometimes figure out how to make it low bandwidth, high impact in terms of those connections. So I'm happy to, if you want, put together a, a, a template letter that we can send them. We're going to explain Let's do that. asking for, like, you know, if we can even just send them the occasional bullet point list of key questions that they might be able to help us with, um, or forward us to the people who they know who might be able to help us. Um, okay, so yeah. template letter to send to the most relevant authors based on specific tasks. And then, and then I, I have someone who can help us with, with getting those actually sent out and responding. Perfect. I've seen we sometimes get their email and the actual the data set with the full text data in it. It's a bit rare, but, but um, sometimes those pop up and that save a bit of time. Yeah, and probably maybe it's also a good idea to assemble that list of authors with their emails so we can actually shoot, shoot out that template uh, list of authors with emails and expertise. Okay. For the visualization summary. With the facility head on, I'll, I'll mention PST-wise, it's 11.45 here. What are the next um, core core goals that we have? And okay, so uh, yeah, well, let's probably wrap it up. We've got plenty of stuff to work on together. Again, uh, we'll have to get better at understanding the commitments and the availability. Uh, that's the core missing piece right now. I'm not sure how to solve for that, but we'll figure it out. The core things that we've discussed, uh, figure out the missing title data from visualization, add the similarity metric results to the current visualization, hit 20 people mark on the scoring of the tasks in the scoring sheet, figure out what data sets medical experts are lo looking for, figure out the list of data sets to manually enrich with the help of scale AI, identify a list of experts that would benefit the group and overall momentum, non-technical talent, uh, template letter to send to the most relevant authors based on specific ta tasks and list of authors with emails and expertise. Sounds good. Uh, where's this task list at? Uh, it's in my input, like <laughs> currently <laughs> typing it. Ah, uh, gotcha. <laughs> uh, I'll transform it into Trello uh, cards and we'll probably assign people that are the most suitable to do that. Perfect, thanks. Can I, can I All propose right. one more? Uh, for that list uh, to like try and set up like a buddy system. So if we compare everyone up with someone ideally that's in a completely different time zone from them. <laughs> so uh, there's always someone online pretty much 24 seven would be the ideal. Maybe it takes like three people or four people uh, that's across the tasks that's familiar with the, the code for a particular um, effort that we're doing and that can jump in. And the other aspect of that is obviously uh, there's a risk of any of us getting taken offline at any point. Yep. But this thing we're trying to fight. Yeah. So, like, try and insulate the group against that. Okay. Figuring out 24 7 pairing of the responsible people 
to the tasks. Yeah, this is great. And, and it's true in, in, in terms of just, just sort of, um, you know, truck proofing ourselves to make sure that the, each individual who is uh, in charge of something or is kind of one of the main stewards keeping momentum going in an area is making sure that they have the documentation on that so that it makes it easy, easy to transfer off. Also for, for those pairings that you're talking about. Okay. Sounds great, guys. It's amazing to see all of you uh, coming up here on, on the call. Um, I'll probably uh, do all of the tasks in, in Trello in a few minutes from now. And yeah, let's just keep uh, communication tight and see how we can help. Sounds great. Right. Thank you for organizing this. You're welcome. Let's do it. Thanks. And please, Daniel, please share the recording so we can uh, send it to other people that uh, were not able to join the call. Sounds good. My, 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 my hard drive ran out at a couple of spots, so there'll be a few little gaps in between me flushing other things out and hitting record again. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right. Cheers. Okay. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye bye.
missing a title, it'll call an API or it'll go to the, make a call to the API and get the title for it. So, um, and one of my main tasks right now is uh, like normalization of the data set anyway. So I can add that in and maybe ha have it by like Monday. Sounds good. That'd be great. I can confirm that for, for at least for the, for the 2020-03-13 um, all sources metadata, it has a lot of the ones at the, at the bottom that are missing uh, segments of data, including title. So that's probably where that's going. Perfect. And the other thing that I wanted to include on this current visualization is